All right, good afternoon. Possibly good morning, I guess, depending on where you are. Um, more than likely, good afternoon. Um, hey, thanks so much for joining in today. My name is Zach Kershensky. I am the uh, customer success manager over here at Cat Software. Um, today, it is, you know, kind of mentioned in the blurb leading up to today. Um, back to basics, and and it is a beautiful, beautiful thing when um, I see customers that have been with us for sometimes a couple months, sometimes many years, and they're growing and they're expanding. And some of you guys know cats really well and you're able to sort of do the onboarding thing, here's our process, but other times, you know, let's leave it to the pros, right? <laughs> so um, we've got a lot of resources online uh, for just sort of basic stuff. Here's candidates, here's jobs, let's bring them together. Here's, you know, here's the workflow. Um, but it's nice to have sort of a video and you know sort of a webinar where we can sort of cover it you know all at once and be able to ask questions and things like that so that's what that's what we're doing today we're just calling it cats 101 it's back to basics um, if you've been with cats for a while you're very very familiar with the system odds are you're probably going to know a lot of this but if you're newer to the system and if you're in the future if it's not september 14th and you're watching the the recording of this hello from the past <laughs> uh, that said yeah th this is recorded and this is uh, a video that we're going to have uh, in our knowledge base uh for for future reference for those who want just kind of an overall video to kind of view just in general, uh, how CATS works and, and hit on some of the key points, some of the key features that we offer. Uh, typically, the way that we do these is I will talk for a good 30 minutes, 45 minutes or so, bear with me. <laughs> and then um, we're going to open things up for a QA and a uh, at the end. So if you do have any specific questions, um, feel free to send those in the little questions modal uh, within GoToWebinar. But as we're going through this, if you do see things that, you know, hey, what is that? What does that do? How can I do this? Um, let me know. Uh, Jeff Pauly, my colleague, is with me as well. Uh, he's a product manager over here at CATS, and he's going to be uh, sort of heading off those questions as well throughout this. Um, and again, I mentioned it earlier, we will also be uh, recording this and you will automatically be sent a link to this recording via the email that you registered with. So if you miss anything along the way or if you want to recap, um, that is coming your way. And this is my classic, let's stall for a couple minutes <laughs> while, fo while uh, so some more folks join in. Good numbers today. And, and I tell you, this is exactly what I want to see. Uh, as I'm looking through the registrant list, I see a lot of uh, company names that I recognize, but I'm not seeing necessarily a lot of uh, names of people within those companies that I recognize. And that's exactly why we're doing this. This one's kind of a focus uh, on folks that are newer to the system that may have been added, but they didn't have the classic onboarding process, the classic, you know, training that you would get potentially if you were going through, you know, the sales process, you know, as a new customer. So that's why we're doing this today. Okay, that's enough uh, stalling for now. Let's get to it. So things that we're going to cover today, as much as possible, um, we're going to talk about what CATS stands for. I, I address it every single time. We'll talk about it today, too. Uh, we'll talk about jobs, posting those jobs. Uh, you'll talk a little bit about your career portal. Definitely talking about getting candidates into the system as well as searching on your candidate database. You know, the idea is you're going to take your jobs, you're going to take your candidates, you're going to put them together into your workflow. And so that's going to be a very um, pretty big section we'll cover today. And then just a few bells and whistles that that CATS has to offer that I really, really like, including uh, SMS, texting, email and calendar sync, as well as using the meeting scheduler within CATS. This thing I just kind of honestly threw together, but you can see a little bit of the <laughs> the evolution uh, of cats. So uh, go way, way back in the past to 2006. No one knew what a COVID was. MySpace was in its prime. Uh, I think smartphones were just sort of beginning to be a thing. There, there was a company called Cognizo that was an IT recruiting firm uh, in Minneapolis. And cats was actually built out as an in-house ATS for that company and then we we went to a little bit of an open source model for a while and we said you know what we've got a pretty good product here let's let's ride this wave and and 
15 years later, uh, here we still are through several iterations and logos and things like that. But uh, yeah, Cognizo is the C in CAT and then applicant tracking system is the ATS. So that's kind of the story there, in case you're wondering. All right, I am going to change the share here and I'm gonna go ahead and get CATS brought up and we will dive in. All right, so CATS, again, browser-based applicant tracking system. There is nothing to download. There is nothing to install. There are you know, some, some add-ons that you can add, like our browser extension, which I'll show, that, then, that are little tools that can help you along the way. But um, yeah, that's the beauty of it. Everything's in the cloud, so you don't need to store anything on your computer, no matter what device you're on. Punch in yoursite.cats1.com. That's going to take you to a login page, punch in your uh, email address, punch in your password, and we are good to go from there. When you log in, the first thing you're going to see is something like this. This is your dashboard. And <laughs> frankly, I won't get into too much detail here. Uh, we're going to keep it pretty light today. The dashboard is it's, it's a very nice jumping off point. Uh, from when you're in CATS. So it's one where if you want a very quick view of, okay, I've got this many people um, that are new candidates, and I want to just quickly jump and see only those, you know, 41 people that have, you know, applied for jobs on my website. This is one way uh, to get right to it, as opposed to jumping into my entire candidates database, throwing on some search filters, things like that. Um, if I want to see just very quickly how many calls I have coming up today, uh, uh, how many people were submitted for interviews yesterday, things like that. Um, there are, if you click this green plus sign up here as, a, as an admin, so we're up to 34 different widgets now <laughs> that you can add out to this dashboard. So this is kind of what I talked about. Um, we could have, honestly, probably a webinar that talks almost about this entirely. Um, as a user, you can have your own dashboard as you know, separate from, from one of your colleagues. So feel free to personalize this, add your widgets, you know, click and drag and move around. It's really what we go for in CATS is we want a product that is uh, easy to use, but also very, very customizable. So I'll repeat myself a lot <laughs> when, I, when I say this kind of moving forward, you know, hey, you can customize this, you can customize that. All right, now your version of CATS may be a little bit different. Um, we've got one that's geared towards uh, recruitment agencies. That's kind of what we were, right, back in 2006, and which is the one that we're looking at here. So, you know, if you're hiring as a third party, you're gonna see jobs, and over on the left, I'm going down the record types here. You'll see jobs, you'll see candidates, you'll see companies and contacts. So those are your four main record types and they all kind of interact with each other. So a job is a job. I've been doing this myself about six years. I'm not sure how else to describe what a job is. <laughs> uh, candidates obviously are the people that you're looking to place into those jobs. Now, we also have companies and contacts. These maybe aren't necessarily as clear. Uh, all the jobs in your system belong to a company. So whether that's me, I am hiring you know, a recruiter for my staff, totally fine. You can say that this job belongs to uh, this kitten enterprises that I have set up you know, as, as a test company. Um, you also have your any third parties that you're hiring on behalf of. That's what's gonna be entered in the company space. And then contacts are people records as well, but they're separate from your candidates. Uh, typically, these are your hiring managers, uh, HR people, decision makers. Think of them as people that you're working with to get the jobs in your system, as well as um, uh, people that you would be like submitting candidates to. So uh, along your hiring process, which we'll definitely talk about. All right, so off the top, we'll talk about jobs. If I wanna add a job into my system, pretty straightforward. There's a big button right here that says plus job order. I can punch in the title, I can punch in the location. Uh, one thing I always tell folks is 
the description is is right here you've also got a field down here called notes that look pretty similar so just kind of keep in mind as you're building those jobs out anything that's in the description place is going to be uh, potentially public facing so should you send this job out to your career portal should you send it out to any uh, social media job boards things like that whatever you put in the, this description is going to be public whereas the notes section down here that is uh, internal only so only yourself uh your your colleagues uh, anyone else that's in your cats you know sort of system uh, will be able to see what's in that notes section and again i'll repeat myself on the customizable piece all of this with the exception of a few very basic things title location uh you know description is very very customizable so if there are any uh fields that you know you're looking to capture that aren't necessarily built in we make it very easy to create your own custom fields and uh, you'll see those within any records that you that you choose to add them to a couple other pieces worth mentioning here um one is going to be the applications now we've had a webinar specifically on applications again trying to keep it pretty light today but just know that as part of your hiring process you can create a whole section a whole you know separate database i guess <laughs> if you will of applications and then depending on the job depending on the client, uh company you're, you're you're working with job type you can have separate applications that the customer or i'm sorry that, that the candidate um, would be filling out a lot of times i'll see sites that have just sort of a general application right so it's okay upload your uh, resume punch in your contact info and then from there let's say i've got a developer job so i've got some developer specific questions or let's say you know it's a marketing job so i've got my marketing specific questions and you can add those sort of in combination to the uh, to the candidate. It's all it's 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 smooth. It's just one page. You, they don't have to fill this thing out, then submit, and fill this other thing out, and hit submit. All those questions get sort of combined into one, even if you're checking you know, multiple boxes, multiple applications here. And then the other thing worth talking about is this publish section and that's that's a whole nother can of worms which we'll absolutely dig into um so by default this box is going to be checked more than welcome to uncheck it that's totally fine when you create the job and this box is checked we'll talk about what happens so first i'm going to go into a job that's been built out so if i open up this digital marketing specialist position Again, my descriptions here, all these different fields, things of that nature. Um, I've also got this publishing section right here. Now, as I create the job or later on, if I just want to manually go in and, uh, and, and hit that button, basically two things happen here. So one, the job is going to go out to your career portal, which is essentially a web page that hosts the jobs for you. And that's where the candidate can fill out the application, submit it, and be entered as a candidate in your database. The other thing that can happen is it can send it out to a number of third-party sources. And again, this is one, um, honestly, I think our next webinar, this is, this is, this is gonna be our topic, is, is job posting, how to hook it up to third parties, um, things of that nature. So step one is it goes out to your career portal step two is it can go out to indeed glassdoor uh, uh zip recruiter things like that even even social media so facebook linkedin and depending on the where that job lands there's going to be some type of language that says click here to, to view more information click here to apply and then that's going to take the candidate to where that job is located on your career portal so that career portal ends up being kind of you know top of the funnel i guess as far as bringing candidates uh, into your system so if i go back to that job i can view it on the career portal by clicking this button over here on the right this is of course after it's been published 
And again, this is pretty low frills, um, and that's by design. The we've we've been doing this for quite a while, and and it's definitely shown that the fewer distractions that you have on your jobs page, the more likely it is you're going to get that candidate to finish uh, the application process. So you know, kind of keep that in mind. Um, again, it looks something like this. This is a test cats one, so by all means, throw your own logo in here. <laughs> change the colors, change the columns. There are options for that. Um, if you come over here on the left where it says more and go to portals, and just like we can create uh, multiple applications, you can also create multiple portals. So let's say you've got, I mean, I've seen it used where uh, companies have like different locations, uh, different branches that they want to host like on their jobs on separate pages for. You can do that um, if you've got, like I said, different brands within your company, you wanna brand these jobs as company A, you wanna brand these jobs as company B, you can create multiple portals for that. Uh, there's a lot of different use cases for that. And within the design options for that, again, you can upload a logo, throw in a banner image. We've got a lot of sort of like default color presets uh, that you can use in that space. So by all means, feel free to go in there uh, and then each one individually you can sort of change as well. So there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do on that portal. And what most people will do is they'll take a link on their existing company website and they'll say, click here uh, to view our, our current jobs. And then that link will take them to this page right here. That's the quick and easy way to do it. Uh, alternately, if you do want to keep sort of the branding, keep the headers and footers, of your existing company page, company website, and then just sort of include those jobs in a specific section, you have that option as well. So this is a current customer of ours, and I really like the way that they've done um, their jobs widget, where, if I click the right thing, you can see in this section right here, this is cats. These are their cats jobs that they have, but I, I still feel like I'm on her website, because I am. <laughs> uh, but then of course, when I click into a job, then that's gonna take it, take uh, take the, uh, the, the candidate where the job is located on the career portal. Um, and the options for that are right here. I've got code for the jobs widget. And that's just one where you can view it, embed that within the, the source code on your uh, on your company page, so. Again, we, we, we've had a specific uh, webinar on that. By the way, and this is a good place to, to point you guys in this direction. At any point, hit this question mark icon right here. And we've got great resources for you guys, uh, both within our knowledge base and our training videos. And these pre-recorded webinars that we've had are also located um, in our knowledge base. So we had an hour conversation just on job posting in the career portal. Uh, as well as applications. So without going into depth on those today, again, we're keeping it pretty light. Um, I highly recommend jumping into these two things right here to kind of get a good feel for cats. Okay, so that's jobs. We'll talk a little bit about candidates. Let's pick on Jeff here, what we do. <laughs> uh, within this profile, you can see it's not drastically different layout wise from, from how a job looks. So again, with the customization, all of these different kind of cards, we call them, I can click and I can drag these around to my liking. I can expand the fields. I can collapse them. You know, I'm not big on clutter. I like, okay, show me the relevant stuff, hide what's not. You can absolutely do that here uh, within CATS. Now, a couple pieces worth noting within a candidate profile. Uh, one is gonna be this attachments section. So if they apply, with their resume and then maybe like a cover letter or something. Um, all the attachments are gonna be listed in here. At any point, I can just manually say, hey, let's let's throw in an attachment and it'll bring up a little file uh, file dialogue on your computer and, um, and that'll be good. Um, references, cover letters, resumes, pictures of their dog, whatever you want to include as an attachment, you can absolutely throw in there and then the beauty of it is not only do you have it for your own reference, 
But let's say when Jeff here gets to a point where I'm going to go ahead and submit their resume to, let's say, a hiring manager. With those files in place, I can automatically include any other attachments, boom, with one click. So it's not something I would have to like go and search for on my computer. It's already here. Check the box, hit the submittal, good to go. And we'll talk about that workflow in, in just a moment. The other thing I wanted to talk about within a candidate profile is going to be this feed section right in here. So the feed encompasses a lot. You know, essentially any type of interactions that your users are having with this particular candidate is going to be shown here. So as they apply for jobs, as they change statuses within the jobs, email conversations, text conversations, even just manual notes. So if I come over here to this panel over here on the right, and I'm gonna say, all right, I'm gonna log an activity, and we had a phone call about the full stack developer job, and I can just say, looking for 100K. Hit save, and then that is a timestamp note. It says, I left it, this is the job we talked about, it's at this company. And then this is here, and it's visible to all of the users within my system. So now if I find Jeff, or if one of my colleagues finds Jeff tomorrow for a similar role, but it's only you know going up to like 75K, eh, Jeff's not the guy for this one. And I don't have to go, and, and that guy doesn't have to tap me on the shoulder and say, hey, have you talked to this Jeff guy? Is, is, you know, it's a nice sort of central place to be able to look uh, within that profile for any interactions that they've had. Uh, you know, maybe maybe it's maybe it's tomorrow, maybe it's a year from now, and I'm no longer here. <laughs> but I could see that this person left this note and, and it kind of goes from there. You kind of pick picking up what I'm putting down there, hopefully. Um, there are a lot of ways to get candidates into the system. If you hit more over here on the left and go to mass import. We're going to give you the ability to upload, let's say you've got a spreadsheet sitting on your computer. Maybe you've got like a folder full of resumes. So we're going to give you the option there. Uh, we can do a spreadsheet of up to 10,000 rows. You can throw up to 500 resumes at a time at the system. And it's going to parse them. It's going to create a candidate uh, record. Uh, you can even put them into pipelines uh, as they're imported, depending on how they come in. Another way to add candidates is going to be via email. So let's say a candidate sends uh, their resume over to me via email. All I have to do is hit forward and send it to resumes at, and it's going to be your site.cats1.com. And it'll do the exact same thing. It'll, it'll create a candidate record, put them in your database, parse it, and even potentially put them in a pipeline if you include that information uh, in the subject line of the email. And one of the other really cool ways to do it, let's say I'm out on LinkedIn and I want to automatically add somebody into the system. Um, we've got what's called our Cats browser extension, where if I hit this Cats icon right here, and I'm not sure you guys can see this uh, within the go-to meeting, but essentially I click that, and it's going to find all the things it can on this page, I hit Add to Cats. And if I go over into Cats, boom, it automatically created all this info, created a nice PDF resume based off of their, uh, their, their, their page that I just brought in. And then this is automatically keyword searchable, which is what I wanted to talk about next. Um, searching candidates within your database. And again, we had a whole resume, uh, I'm sorry, a, a whole webinar <laughs> based solely on searching. So um, I'll have to keep this pretty light. Couple places to start within CATS. So if I wanted to very quickly find that person that I just added, I know their name or I know part of their email or phone number, I can hit where it says search everything up here. And I can say Van, De... yeah, there she is, Laura Vandenberg. Boom. I can get right to that record. Now you can do it the other way, but you're going to end up searching through a lot more stuff. Might take a little bit more time, 
and it's, it's just not really as direct. The other way you're gonna potentially search, I usually say, I usually say start right here where it says search this grid. And this is gonna be more of like a sourcing type of search where, you know, show me uh, de Java developers within 50 miles of, of downtown Minneapolis, that type of thing. So this is Boolean supported. So if, if I do wanna say, Java and not JavaScript plus HTML plus CSS and, 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 and kind of go crazy with the keywords, I absolutely can. Just for the purpose of um, uh, this, this demo, I'm just gonna keep it to one keyword. So the, the, the search results that I get here are going to be ranked based off of A, how many times that keyword appears and one, because <laughs> it's about equal, um, where it appears. So for example, someone with the current title of developer is gonna rank higher than someone who says, yeah, I worked with a developer like five years ago on this project, but you know, really, I, I, I'm a BA. It's gonna come back as a result, right? Because that, that, that keyword that you're looking for is in their resume, but they're not gonna be up as high if, as someone who's currently you know, doing that, you know, that type of role. And okay, I got 77 people here, but I'm seeing people like in New Jersey and like DC and Pennsylvania. So I want to narrow that down a little bit. What I can do is start to combine search filters. When I search here, it's looking at everything. It's looking at your entire profile. It's looking at their resumes. But if I just want to search some specific fields, for example, their location, what I can do, hit the green plus sign, and then I'm gonna have a drop down over here of every single field within their profile that I can search on individually. And the zip code is a good one because if they have a zip code in their location, we can do a radius search where I can say, all right, show me candidates that are within, like I said, let's say 60 miles. And that's just a downtown Minneapolis zip code. So now I went from 77 down to, oh, the silence is painful. Okay, <laughs> 11. So that's a lot better, right? And then from here, what I can do, and, and, and let's say I even want to add more than that, right? So this is just sort of two, uh, two things on top of each other. If I want to kind of go further, I can add another filter, and I can add another filter, and I can add another filter and any specific fields I can sort of combine. I'm not sure what breakfast is in there for. I'm sure that's a custom field. <laughs> so I can sort of combine those and continue to narrow down my results. And maybe I'm always searching for developers you know, in Minneapolis. What I can do, if I hit this drop down over to the left, I can say developer 60 miles Minneapolis. I already used this example, but I can save it, hit that drop down, go back to it, and then that's a search that's going to automatically run for me every time I hit that drop down, so I don't have to redo those filters every time. And then one of the cool things that you can do from here, if I hit the little preview icon over to the left, I can basically see the candidate resume from here. I can see the words that I'm looking for highlighted here in yellow, and I can scroll through the candidates using these arrow keys up at the top. I can also use my uh, arrow keys on my keyboard to kind of go through these one by one. So um, again, there's there's a lot of cool things that you can do with the searching in cats. I want to keep it pretty light and we only got about 10, 15 minutes left here. So uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll go ahead and move on. Um, so we've got candidates, we've got jobs within the system. The main thing we kind of want to work on now is what happens when they come together? So typically that's that's gonna be your workflow. So if I go back into a job, let's say we're looking at the digital marketing specialist page. Uh, if I scroll down to the bottom, I've got my pipeline. And I've got a couple search filters on there, so we'll go and clear that out. So candidates go in the pipeline for a job uh, a couple different ways. Uh, if they apply for this job through my website, you'll see them in there. 
Uh, I can manually, let's say I was just running that search and I want to add candidates into the pipeline from there, I can do it from that page. Um, I can email them in. There you know, a number of different ways that they can land in the pipeline. Again, with the customization piece, there's kind of a lot going on here, right? I've got like name, location, action, status, mobile phones. Maybe at this juncture, mobile phones isn't super important for me. What I can do, hit this drop down on the bottom right. I'm going to say columns, and I'm going to uncheck mobile phones. Hit save, abracadabra, it's gone. So again, you can really customize sort of the view, the information uh, that's in this space. Uh, what I kind of want to focus on for now is essentially what's on the left is what the candidate is named. That'll take me directly to their profile. Don't have to though. We can always use that candidate preview from here to kind of view any information that's on their page. I can use the arrow keys once again to kind of scroll through within the pipeline as well. And let's go ahead and close it out for now. And on the right is the status that they're currently in. So this is my workflow. So this is my definition of the stages of the hiring process for my company. And we're gonna jump around a little bit here. As an admin, I can control what these stages are, what they say, what color they are, and and absolutely what they do. So to do that, and again, I'm gonna jump around a bit. Um, I will go to settings, administration, workflow. And again, we're getting into the multiples thing. So without getting too ahead of ourselves, you know, kind of wrap your head around, we can do multiple applications depending on the job, right? We can do multiple career portals if you want to have like different branches or you know brands of your company that you're posting jobs as. You can also have multiple workflows. So different stages in your hiring process. And you know, that could depend on again the type of job. Maybe you've got like an entry level, you know, type of position where it's like, okay, let's do a phone screen, bring them in for an uh, on-site interview, and we're good to go. Or, you know, if I'm an executive recruiter and I've got, you know, <laughs> submittal after submittal after submittal and, you know, interview after interview, maybe you want to build out different workflows based off of the job types. Or if I'm recruiting for different companies, you know, you get, you get the drift. Um, for now, just go to look at this general workflow. And again, over on the left is what the status is called. Over on the right, under this triggers column, if anything, is what the is what the status does so the idea here is when i change a candidate to let's say phone screen i am going to send out an email that says hey thought you looked like a good fit for this job uh here's a link to my calendar which we'll talk about uh, <laughs> uh, go ahead and pick a time that works for you Maybe it's not such great news. Maybe I'm I'm sending somebody right into this not in consideration status, and as a result, it's going to send a templated email that says, "Hey, thanks for applying. Unfortunately, uh, you know, we're not going to move forward at this time." That you know that type of thing. Now you can do that manually, you know, one by one if you want to, but kind of the idea behind this is that you've got the ability to sort of create these templated emails that say, dear candidate first name, we appreciate your interest in looking at job order title. <laughs> uh, and then if I want to send this to like five different people at once, I can, and it's going to populate their name. It's going to populate the job that they applied for. And maybe I want to send it the next day at one o'clock. That way they don't get the email before they even get home from the interview. <laughs> I can automatically do that within CATS, and that's where you set up <clears throat> a lot of these different kind of workflow triggers that you can do. Um, it's not just email, probably the most popular, absolutely is the most popular actually. <laughs> but um, if I click this green plus sign, that's going to allow me to add a trigger to a given status. And if I hit this drop down, that's going to change what the action is. Let me double check. 
Yeah, GoToWebinar is kind of funky with not showing the drop downs. That's okay. Uh, so I've got submit to client, for example, or I've got uh, send a text message, uh, create a task. There's a number of different things that you can do based off of changing a candidate to that status, and then this particular thing is going to happen. So we can kind of look at it here on the back end. Let's jump back over into that job, check out the pipeline and kind of see it in practice, right? So I'm looking at my pipeline. Um, I've got my different statuses now uh, based off of this job. And let's do a little bit of filtering. There's, I got phone screening people. I have people that have been placed. I've got new people. So let's filter it down. I'm gonna hit this status drop down, and I'm gonna say only show me new people. Cool, so now I've got like 10 people to work with. That searching method that I showed you before when we were looking at all of our candidates can also apply here. So of these 10 people, this is a digital marketing job. Let's start with marketing. And I might not get any results. I might be shooting myself in the foot here. <laughs> hey, cool, I got three people. Awesome, so now we're gonna move forward. Um, hit the candidate preview. And I can see highlighted in yellow where those different search terms are coming through. Maybe I want to kind of arrow through with these folks. Take a look, take a look. And now let's say, yep, Alicia looked good. I'm going to go ahead and move Alicia from new candidate. I'm just going to click the name of the status over to phone screen. And here are my triggers that I have on that status. So I want to send an email. See, it knows the name, it knows the job, and even, you know, here's a link over to my calendar. I can do that for one person, I can do that for three people, I can do it for 50 people. All sort of the same process where instead of clicking the name, now I'm just gonna check the boxes over here on the left, and I'm gonna say change status. And let's send them all to phone screen. Let's send them all that same email. So again, without getting too in depth, hopefully that, that gets the wheels rolling a little bit, <laughs> the wheels turning a little bit in your head um, as far as the kinds of things that you can start to do with, with your workflow. Um, that is probably, if, if CATS was one feature, if we had to say this is our one big thing, Honestly, that's it. It's, it's defining what the steps in your workflow are, what they do, and being able to, I mean, that's, at the end of the day, it's about saving time. And so being able to go into this spot right here, and again, all of these, I can click and drag and move around. I can delete statuses. I can blow the whole thing up and build a new one from scratch. This is absolutely up to you as far as what those steps are, what they say, and and, and what they do. All right, um, a couple bells and whistles here that I want to show off to you guys, and then we'll we'll start doing uh, the, the Q and A section here. Um, if you're a new user in the system and you want to get started, where do I start? For one, I would say hit the question mark <laughs> and check out the knowledge base and check out the training videos. You're going to get a lot of good information there. The training videos are not scary. I promise. There's actually, uh, we would put a lot of pride in these. All of them are like two or two to four minutes long at the most. So if there's things that just don't appeal to you and you don't want to have to like find, you know, the, where you click the next part of the, like the hour long video, that's not the case here. Just skip it. Watch the next one. Totally fine. Uh, so I, again, I do highly recommend that. Check out the knowledge base as well. A lot of good articles in there, usually with combined with the videos. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to mention was click on your avatar here. Usually it's just going to be like the first letter of your name and go to my profile. And this is where you can set up um, a lot of the things that I want to talk about. First is email and calendar integration. So the idea behind that is as I email candidates outside of CATS, if you're using Gmail, if you're using Outlook, we have the ability to pull those conversations into CATS, and it's gonna be in that feed section that we kind of talked about before. So conversations that I have, 
conversations that any other of my users with that email sync turned on, incoming and outgoing emails will appear here. So again, you talk about having that sort of open collaborative environment where you're working. Another really good example, I can see that my colleague sent Jeff an email six months ago about a very similar role and it did not go well. <laughs> so now I'm gonna save face and, you know, and not reach out to that person, that type of thing. <clears throat> uh, calendar syncs as well. And this is where we're gonna have kind of a, a nice little layered thing, but this is probably my favorite feature of CATS. Um, if I go back over to Jeff's profile, I have the ability on the right to schedule an event. Looks pretty similar to what you would see if you were setting up an event in uh, Google Calendar, Outlook, something like that. And when I create this, what happens, this is my least favorite part of the whole thing, <laughs> is if I click over to this calendar, I have my own sort of standalone um, cats calendar. Okay, and I've got a lot of the stuff turned off, that's why. That's why we're not, yeah, here we go. <laughs> so as I start to turn those on, you'll see some different things. Um, on its own, that's fine. Some people are, are totally fine with having like two separate calendars, more power to you. But this exists almost solely so that events that you create in CATS can go out to your external calendar. So if I go into Jeff's profile, I wanna schedule an interview, I can do it from there. That hits my CATS calendar, and then that goes out to my Google calendar and vice versa. So those calendars will talk to each other. You set that up in that same place where you set up the email sync. Uh, on top of that, we've got what's called the meeting scheduler. So if you've, honestly, if you've worked with me at all or a lot of the uh, support uh, <laughs> or sales team over here, um, we, we lean on this quite a bit. We say, hey, look, awesome, let's have a chat. Here are the times when I'm available. Go ahead and grab a time that works for you. If you're familiar with like Calendly, I know HubSpot does a similar feature. Um, very, very similar um, in that space. This technically, uh, talks to your cat's calendar. But then remember your cat's calendar is talking to your Google or your Outlook calendar. And so uh, essentially that meeting scheduler is looking at you know your, your, your external calendar. And then with that URL, that's just something that you can send to people manually or let's talk about that workflow, remember? I said, okay, I've got these folks. I wanna go ahead and send them to this phone screen status, doing so is automatically going to send an email. Within that email, I have a link to my calendar. So if I go into a pipeline, I, I, I do my due diligence, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my sourcing here. I'm gonna say, okay, I liked one, two, three, four, five. I like these five people, I'm gonna change their status. phone screen, check the email box and hit submit. Won't actually click it. <laughs> Doing that right there, that like five seconds, I sent five personalized emails <clears throat> to five different people that had a link to my calendar to book a time for a phone screen. I didn't have to play phone tag, leave a message, copy and paste an email, change out the names, it all happened. <laughs> within just a few seconds, within just a few clicks. So that's one really good example um, of the time-saving processes that you can use um, within CATS. So that's that's kind of one of, the, one of my favorite things I like to end on. Um, I'm gonna pause for just a minute. Thank you guys so much. You've been very patient while I've been blabbering on. Um, looking forward to your questions. So I'm gonna pause for just a minute, take a quick drink, and I will um, jump on and start answering the questions that you're sending through. Thank you so much.
All right, we will jump right back in. So I um, had a question. Uh, could you use that meeting scheduler as a link sent to people in LinkedIn in mail? Yeah, I mean, honestly, whatever <laughs> whatever you want to do with, with that link is up to you. Uh, people include it in their workflow trigger, but um, people will even include it in. So one thing I didn't mention uh, off the bat here and, and I talked about a little bit, was uh, was was texting. So we've got SMS built into the system as well, where you can send uh, text messages right to to a candidate's phone number. Uh, as you're sending those text messages, people will actually include a template that has a link to their calendar from there. So it's another way just to sort of reach out um, and send that link. You know, we're, we're in the era of everything's on a phone, so very very mobile friendly. Uh, that uh, that that. Uh, meeting scheduler. So certainly people can just hit that link on their text, opens up a window on their phone, uh, book a time with you from there too. Uh, one person mentioned, how do I uh, get the browser extension? Very good question. So um, that's one.com forward slash downloads, or just go to our main website. And there's a link down here at the bottom. All right, so I had one question uh, pertaining to the workflow. So again, to make any sort of like site-wide uh, customizations, uh, you'll you'll need to be a site admin. If if one easy way to know if you're an admin or not, hit that settings icon up here, and um, you know, or if there is no settings icon, <laughs> you're not an admin basically. Um, so this whole settings admin thing won't be an option for you. Um, you'd want to talk to your site admin that you do have um, for giving you that access. Uh, now, as far as creating those new statuses, you go to administration, you go to workflow, and you click into the individual workflow, and there's a button right up here that says add status. And that's where you can type in the title, choose the color, um, you know, the mapping, we don't have a ton of time to, to get into, but it's a way to kind of group statuses for uh, for reporting purposes. And then the prereqs are, are a pretty nice feature too. Let's say I want to make sure I'm not submitting anybody before they were phone screened. I can say, and there's a little bit of that in place here too, right? So I've got this client interview status where the prereq is phone screen. So it's not going to let me change anyone to this status unless they've been in this phone screen status first. Uh, had a question about mass emailing candidates or contacts from CATS. Absolutely you can. Um, we're not a platform that's like super, super like laser focused on, on, on that side of things, but you do have the ability to send multiple emails out at once. Uh, essentially it's, it's 2,500 emails outgoing per user per month. So just kind of keep that in mind. But let's say I'm running that same type of search where, you know, let's say I'm just, I'm gonna go back to like where I had 70 people in my search results. Um, and this applies to all mass actions. So this is a great kind of topic to bring up here. Um, if I check this box right up here, right now I'm looking at 77 results. I've only got 50 candidates on a given page, so it's spread out over two pages. Now, what I can do though, to select all 77 people, hit this box right here. I'm gonna have this dialogue at the bottom that says, okay, you've selected all 50 on this page, but then I can click this link right here to select all 77. So that's gonna go across all the pages of results that I have. And then I can take action from here, right? So I can say, add these people to a pipeline or export their data you know, data to a spreadsheet, or email them. And that's gonna pop out a, 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 you know, an email page like this. I can type one up if I want to. I can use those tags that I talked about, or I can use a template that I've already saved into the system before. 
Maybe let's find one that looks a little more professional. Good luck. <laughs> Fair enough. So again, you can use things like job owner title, your name, their name in those emails that go out as well. And so, you know, 45 people of those 77 had email addresses, so they're included here. Um, all emails that go out of the system are BCC'd, by the way. So Jesse doesn't know that Adam doesn't know that Dan doesn't know that Benjamin, Mark, all got the, the, the same email. It's only going to show it <laughs> as addressed to them. Man, the questions are flying in. Thank you so much, guys. Um, one more person asked about uh, the jobs widget. Very good question. So uh, again, as an admin, you're going to come over here to more and you're going to go to portals. And if you have multiple, you can you know choose which one you're talking about. Otherwise, it's just going to say general. And the options for that code is down here in this integration section. If I, if I want to view the code, I can do that, highlight it, do the copy thing. Otherwise, I can just hit the copy button. And that's essentially just going to copy that, that text snippet, that code snippet. And again, on, uh, on, on within the source code of your uh, careers page on your company website, you're just going to want to paste that in. And it looks, you know, again, sort of the difference here is pretend I have a link on my website that says, hey, click here to view current openings. And then it takes them over to this page, branded, but, you know, maybe not quite as, you know, styled as your company website. So that's option one, the quick and easy way to do it. Otherwise, we've got potentially something like this where I've got the company web page you know, completely built out. This is all in their environment, but I've got that jobs widget and the code sort of ends up looking like this on the other end. And this is style too. It's, it's, it's built out to match the CSS that already exists on your page, but um, there are uh, certainly options to style it um, as you would prefer. Um, you know, the, the elements are listed within that code snippet. There's also a knowledge base article. That tells you how to style that with on your company website. So there is that one. Hope that answers your question. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Does it cost money to become an admin? Good question. Um, no, it's, it's just a... Uh, so, so within CATS, typically the way that it works is the the person that created the site is going to be an admin, and then as they add additional users, there's there's just access levels that they can be at. And so ultimately, it's up to your admin as far as what access level um, you're at, whether it's an admin, recruiter, user, you know, and 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 we've got. Um, Again, without getting into too much detail, um, a whole slew of, of options as far as custom access levels that you can set for your users as an admin. So essentially, you can create user groups. And then when you're in this space, you can say, okay, my recruiter users, what jobs can they view? What companies can they view? Can they make edits? Can they delete? Things like that. And again, this will be uh, available to any existing admins within your site. So there's a lot of cool options there. Um, how do folk that, that mentioned a uh, recording link? Yeah, so so a recording of this is actually sent out 24 hours after uh, the webinar. So, so tomorrow afternoon, you'll automatically get a link to this recording um, via email. All right, and we're getting towards the end of it here. For the meeting scheduler, can you have different lengths of time? You can. So within the settings for that, again, you're clicking on your avatar. You're going to My Profile. By default, you're actually going to see up here 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes. So it's going to let um, whoever you're sending the link to choose which amount of time they want. Now, if you want to force them into just one, it's like, look, dude, you're not getting more than 15 minutes from me. <laughs> we, we can do that. So there is this custom duration drop down right here. So I can say, all right, 
I'm only going to give them 15 minutes. Copy that link, throw it here, and now we're locked into that 15 minutes. So yeah, it's a, it's a very good question. So let's say, well, and you mentioned in your question, that's that's sort of the example I talked about, right? So maybe in my workflow, my phone screen, I've got a link that just has little 15 minute windows, but if I'm doing a proper interview, I wanna book an hour, that's the link that I can copy and paste into that email. So absolutely, very good question. Uh... Yeah, I think, and, and again, thank you so much to Jeff. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do this without him <laughs> as far as getting those questions answered. Um, if your questions were not answered, hold tight. Uh, Jeff and I will get to you uh, at, at the end here after we wrap things up. But I think timing-wise, that is, we're, we're right at our, our, our limit. So um, again, thank you, thank you so, so much um, for hopping on today. I uh, just want to reiterate how to kind of get help, how to reach out to us if you have any further questions. 99% of the time, hit that question mark, check out the knowledge base, check out training videos. Otherwise, our support team is monitoring the inbox constantly. Very, very easy just to shoot them a quick email. Uh, if it's not something you want to you know, type back and forth, put in a call. And doing that, we're just going to say, you know, hey, what's going on? Can you attach any files? A lot of times they're just going to be able to shoot you a quick reply and says, oh, actually, hey, this is the problem. But <laughs> if you want to jump on a phone call and they're going to send you that calendar link to book a call. And that's typically, um, it's not even typically, it's, it's always same day unless you're hitting us like right at the end of the day. But um, yeah, yeah, if you want to book a call uh, with our support team, that's all it takes uh, is, is to hit the question mark and do request a call. Um, I am also here uh, for, for trainings. So there are uh, over 5,000 CATS users now. Hooray <laughs> for us. Um, and there's one of me. <laughs> so typically I don't do like the one-to-one -one trainings, but if you are a uh, group, let's say, that, that are sort of new to CATS and you want to try to get something in place, you know, feel free to reach out. Um, even, you know, even if you are you know, just, just the one person and you want some heads up, I'm very, very, very uh, available. So feel free to send this through. And um, if we can't book a training, at least I'll be able to get you some answers, some resources, and and, and we can kind of get you going from there. So uh, help is absolutely available. We are we we pride ourselves on on the customer service um, that we provide. So um, that's going to do it for today. We're at the end of the hour. Thank you guys again so so much. Uh, Keep an eye out. We're going to do this again next uh, next month, uh, second Tuesday of every month we do this. And yeah, we're going to dig into jobs and job posting and that whole crazy world. So um, it's a beautiful day. Enjoy it. <laughs> Have a good one, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.